Should there be a protest on Tuesday <laughs> on the streets? Tennessee, I, I, I'm dead serious. I want to make this oh. happen. And anybody that can help me, I will do this for you. You spread the word. Off the Hook Sports is calling for a protest. We are calling for people to have the big placards like they're on strike. And we want them to be on the curbside. Now, this isn't like a storm the Capitol thing, so don't get going in that direction. We don't want that. Uh, there are no weapons <laughs> needed, but we just want some people to hold up signs that says bleep you NCAA. That's what we're shooting for. Dave, when we were talking about this last night, I, I was kidding. I, I didn't know you were really going to do this. <laughs> it's it's a good idea. What's wrong with protesters? That's what I well, our what is based on. What? What if somebody gets hurt? Nobody's going to get hurt because this is a non-violent NCAA oh. protest, unlike those ones back in the 40s. Okay, so these things always go according to plan. You know, did I ever take did you ever see that photo of me standing with strikers at Syracuse? They strike it outside this building, and it was the I get I forgot what season it was, but I was trying to get my picture taken with different groups and weird people. And I had it, I was holding a plaque and I don't even know what they were protesting, but I was there with them. I have the photo. Yep. Okay. Well, we lost some rating points there. Go ahead. Yeah. That was a good, that's a good one. What do you think, Caleb? Um, should, should we push for protesters? We can even start it today. Yeah. I know they're in, they're in court there. Uh, here. Yes. Uh, Travis says they're already there. I think this is a good thing. I think I could get in the car and probably do the show from there. And and not for any journalistic endeavor, but basically just to protest. Just go out there and, and stand with my my big card, whatever it is. Or maybe I could use like a pizza board and be in the middle hey, of do, it. Do you still tell people you're practicing journalism now? <laughs> There's a big difference between talk show host and reporter, isn't there? Kayla, what do you think about a protest? Would that be good or bad for Tennessee's image? I think it would actually. I'm sorry, Dave. I think it would look sad. Um, and the the reason it would is because you protest for things that are institutionally wrong. I think the institutions are going to work themselves out here in the courts. The courts are going to find the NCAA in violation of the Antitrust Act. So there's really nothing for me to think that there should be protested. Because, but because I think it's going to work it out. Now, if the courts side with the NCAA, all bets are off. Go protest. I think if the courts side with the NCAA, I think every college football player should refuse to play next year, honestly, and just bankrupt the NCAA at that point. Um, but I don't. I, it's hard for me to do it now when I think the institutions are going to side with the NCAA. Quick, funny history lesson because we talked about violent or not violent protest. This is all about the NCAA violating the Antitrust Act. Well, as you guys who know, if you guys are any experts in Gilded Age history, the Antitrust Act was from an era where workers were walking off their jobs and they were setting their buildings on fire and hoping their owners, that the bosses and the boss's kids were in the building with it when they did. I mean, that was basically the, that was the Gilded Age into the progressive era of America. And that was some fun times where they, you know, they just basically took a woodshed to their bosses if they thought they were mistreated. Yeah, depending on when you're watching, it could be early enough to get your protest together. And here's what you do. If you're a Tennessee fan, I know this would be tough. You just dress up as an Alabama fan that's protesting unfair treatment of college athletes. It's <laughs> <laughs> a pretty good idea, well, isn't it, John? Yeah, yeah, that would fool them. Uh, it wouldn't take much. I would, I would encourage, I mean, if you're good at details, why not just go to Indianapolis? where the NCAA's headquarters are and protest outside their building. I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, you could carry the signs and placards and uh, protest against the NCAA. And you could have your signs could say things like free Nico uh, and use other players. You could say uh, free Quinn yours. Uh, you could say, you know, because you want to involve other schools in this even though he's not in trouble. Uh, so I would do that and also 
schedule crew meets to kind of put the NCA in its place, that kind of thing. I like it. Uh, John, this is uh, been posted on our message board. Could you read this, please? Bama had a player knowingly spreading an STD. Now, this is where I got to get serious here, okay? I want to make sure. Are you, that, a, wait, Dave, are you opposed to that? Yes, that's where I draw okay. the line. Protesters oh. cannot spread STDs. I think that's very important to stay away from that, Caleb. I mean, there's only one way to spread an STD at a protest, okay, guys? I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's only one real way to... uh uh spread an std at a protest but look i mean th this is honestly the truth i think if the ncaa comes and down these meetings are happening now so if you're going to do your protest you need to go ahead and get your alabama gear on and get your placard board and get there okay so the protests are with your leverage now if florida state tried to protest the college football new year's six bowl selection by just not showing up for the orange bowl i don't think anybody cared because i think we all are like what happened to florida state would have happened anyway so i don't think that really bothered any of us <laughs> that they did that um i do think by there the way, is a lot of is anybody by the way is anybody glad this came up so that what we don't have to continue to hear florida state b and Juan? go ahead caleb Yes. And they thought they showed up everybody in Michigan, uh, Alabama became like the highest rated bowl game in college football history. And so it's, you know, they didn't do any, wasn't worth anything. Now, um, could, as far as Florida state, I mean, as far as this protest goes, again, I think the leverage would be from the players because they have the leverage. And if the NCAA doesn't come down the right way, Again, college football, these guys produce all the revenue for every other sport there is. And, you know, my one of my big, like, soapboxes, a lot of them, I mean, there is a, you know, culture in America, and it's fine. A lot of people say, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You come from nothing. We're all about free markets. These kids, a lot of times, come from rough backgrounds and do that. And then all of a sudden, some NCAA gets to step in and say, well, we need to take some of the money you earn so we can finance these other sports that nobody cares about. If they don't, if the NCAA is not careful, if I'm an athlete, or if an, even if an NIL law is passed that limits the money that college football players can make, some college football players, I in unison walk off the job and don't play next year. Well, now you say that jokingly, and peaceful and patriotic is what we're looking for. Do you think there would be any sort of real protest among players? Because you had Dartmouth win a case against the NCAA. Do you think players might just up and say, and it's going to be the Ivy League snobs. I mean, it's not going to be the grunts that are lifting weights in the South. I mean, it's not. But it's some Ivy League snob could say, hey, well, you're selling all these fencing tickets. Stick it. Huh? I'm getting... <laughs> I'm getting out of here um, because you are not, uh, you do not have my best interest at heart. Do you think that could happen? Brought to you by Campbell Cunningham, Taylor, and Han. They love in this segment. Enjoy life better when you see better. Local vision service for LASIK, cataract surgery, and regular eye examination. Can I tell you a quick story? Yesterday and Friday, my eyes were red, and they also had the local vision center, and I had some sort of a uh, little bit of an infection in my eyes. Look at my eyes. That's the best. I mean, that's the best endorsement I can give you. My eyes are perfectly fine. I saw them at four o'clock yesterday. Um, so uh, back on back on topic, John. Um, it just uh, it, it seems to me that you would have some athletes protest. I don't think they'd be of any significance where the NCAA basketball tournament would be in jeopardy. But what is smart? It's walking off after the NCAA rules against you. Yeah, I just don't think you can compare what Ivy Leaguers do to anything that we might see in the SEC. I mean, they're they're in a different world and might as well stay there. Um, <laughs> so, Dave, I'm not even sure what your question was. My question is, do you think you will see at some point, if the NCAA were to win, some sort of response from ncaa athletes should they respond should they protest well yeah if the ncaa says they can't make money i mean that's all but that's not going to happen we're talking hypothetically here they're allowed to make money now though that's uh, 
the old days are gone. They're going to make money. You And the NCAA can't stop that. That's why – I don't know why we're even talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait. Okay, here's – but, John, there's another well, side of this, too. Says, I don't know why, why we're talking about this. We don't want to harp on it too long. That's for sure. But, John, from the other side, and I, you weren't on the show last week. I ranted about it. Okay, say the NCAA loses – and Tommy Tuberville is absolutely asinine NIL law passes Congress, which app, which limits what players can make. It doesn't allow them to collectively bargain, and it doesn't allow them to use NIL for paper play. So if the federal government comes in and passes a law that limits players, well, then you might see them walk off the job. Do you I guys do know it. what? Do you, do you guys honestly, by the way, on the message board, uh, Kaylin says, I'm protesting working between 10 to 12 so we can all meet at Hooker's Corner. Where do we meet for that? Well, we'll be right there. And uh, Caleb's a John. John's already a John. So you can be a John on Booker's Corner win weekly and monthly grand prizes. But did you guys know what uh, uh, Tommy Tuberville actually means in in Native American? What? Do you, do you want to know that? Oh, yeah, Dave. I know. I don't know. I actually don't know. <laughs> Go ahead, Dave. Tell us. Yeah, I mean, please. Can't suck, wait, that jackass. <laughs> what if? Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, T- Tuberville's the one guy that the NCAA was like, "Dad, blame it. Why is he on our side? Now we look stupid." And yeah, what? <laughs> Tuberville literally said, "John, I don't know if you saw his his, his op ed last week. He literally said, you know, this, you know, we need some regulations to teach players about commitment." Says the guy who walked off the job at Ole Miss in the middle of the season, like. This guy's a known quitter. Yeah, it's um, – but say it doesn't matter what Congress does. does uh, ultimately, it will go to the courts. And the courts are uh, – Well, yes, but the no... courts, it's about – it's about a, it's about a federal law, the antitrust law. But if a federal law is created to address college athletes and their rights, that would supersede the antitrust law. So then basically – what Tommy Tuberville's trying to do is to carve out is to use the federal government to carve out an antitrust exemption for the NCAA. Right. Which is would get him votes from Alabama and Auburn fans. He is a total goofball that's just begging for votes. By the way, hit well, like and just, subscribe. Might as well go back and play the games on a the games on a plantation somewhere. I mean, that it's that's not gonna happen. No, we're not gonna do that. 